CTM. Thank you, Dwan. You're welcome. I'm just going to put the sign on it. Whoa. You never know how strong you are until strong is your only choice. You never know how strong you are until strong is your only choice. That was Bob Marley. I've run marathons, I've climbed mountains. I've scuba dived. Going through six sessions of chemotherapy was the hardest thing I ever did. Physically, emotionally, spiritually, the roller coaster, you get tired, then you're feeling better, and you then get tired again. And it's just the mental toughness that you have to have. The only good for me of prostate cancer treatment, well, it's one is that I'm here today. That's the most important. <laughs> but the other is that I'm so grateful. So many relatives, friends, students have been so caring, so loving, so thoughtful, so just nice. And, and that's what I'm most grateful for. Let me take you back. 2002. That's 13 years ago. I was diagnosed with prostate cancer. My PSA was 4.2. The flag is 4.0 for a guy over 40. <coughs> By the way, PSA is prostate-specific antigen. It's a protein that's released in the prostate gland. They do a blood test, simple blood test, urologist does. And the higher it is, the more chances of a problem that you might have with prostate cancer. So let me take you back again. 2002, I'm diagnosed with prostate cancer. I go to Mount Sinai. I have radiology with the same radiologist, Dr. Stock, who treated Mayor Rudy Giuliani. I, I, w I was fine. 2002, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. That's six years. We already did the high five of five years cancer free. And then another year, and then I went to my regular doctor. By the way, married men, men who are in a committed relationship, live longer. No, they really do, because the wives nag them, and nag them, and nag them, go to the doctor. And Randy, my wife, for 32 years, August 28th. A shout out for that. Woo! So they live longer. So I went to my regular doctor. He said, your PSA is high. This is 2008. I went back to Mount Sinai. And they did all kinds of tests. And they found in my prostate, they did a, a CAT scan. And then they did an MRI. And they found in the prostate was a suspicious spot. <laughs> Mount Sinai, Dr. Hall does a biopsy. 28 needles under anesthesia, plus a bone scan, etc. They find nothing. This is 2008. 9, 10, 11, 12. Four more years. And same thing, we go to the regular doctor. He sends me, because my PSA, prostate specific antigen, was higher. I go back to Dr. Hall. They do all kinds of studies, did the bone scan, cat scan. They find them. So now we're at 2012. Again, married men live longer, 2014, 2013. But 2014, Randy makes a regular appointment. I go back to see my doctor, Dr. Uh, Bright, and he said, you're in great shape. But your PSA is really high. 
I go then to, and he recommends, go to NYU, and I went there, Dr. Kelly, he does all kinds of tests. And then, on February 5th, 2015, he sends me at NYU to Dr. Villar, who is the medical oncologist at NYU. And we're in a, a, a pretty small room, and there's Dr. Villar, there's me, Randy is sitting about where she is there, right over there, and Nurse Ann Riccoboni is there. And he says to me, Robert, your prostate cancer now is 3,416. It's metastasized to your bones. I, I, I went into shock, and Randy, who was sitting right across from me, I could see that she was in, in shock also. And then he put on the screen a, a, a bone scan, and it has my name, my date of birth, January 17th, 1945. 70. Look pretty good for 70? Yeah, All right. <laughs> and then under it is some kind of code. And then there's this stick figure. Down the spine is dark, across the scapula dark, across the pelvic dark, and my left femur is dark. He said, those are all the places that you have prostate cancer. My PSA, as I said, was very high, 3,460. And the prostate cancer was just, wow. So Nurse Ann writes a script for me for two medications for nausea. And I got Dr. Bilal. I've been smoking pot for 50 years. <laughs> Over 50. I'm going to use pot to help me with nausea. And he goes, well, you know, we don't have any studies done between the the interaction between marijuana and chemo. We're not your, and I, I want you to have a CT CAT scan on your chest to find out if you're okay. I have a CAT scan on my chest, eight places. I come back a week later and he goes, Robert, you're unremarkable. What? <laughs> yes, you're unremarkable in eight places. You're normal in those places. There's no problem. <laughs> unremarkable. I spent my whole life wanting to be remarkable. Now he tells me I'm the unremarkable. I want to fly under the radar from now on in anything related to health. I want to be normal. I want to be unremarkable. <laughs> and by the way, for the six treatments that I went through, I, I was what are you supposed to do? I, I was never uh, had na nausea. Mm. So you take whatever you want from that. So, where are we? Oh, after my second chemo. Now, most of you, except for Randy and uh, Preston and Cliff and a few other people, never met me before. I had great hair. I mean, it was long, it was reddish blonde, and then toward the end it was gray, and to honor the truth, it was getting a little bit <laughs> scarce, well, a lot scarce up in front, but a lot I had on the sides. So after the second chemo treatment, my, I, I was like this golden retriever. I mean, clumps of reddish, blondish, gray hair, it's out on my clothes, on the, the furniture, <laughs> And my lovely wife, Brandy, is around one of these gloves, around like this, getting my clothes and on the furniture. It was like sometimes your wife nags you and it's good. And sometimes, nag, 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 stop it already. So I didn't call my fancy hairdresser, which I usually do. I went on Broadway and 90th Street in New York City to this little baby barber shop. The guy who, I've gotten a shave there, Gabby his name is. He's busy, he gets, sends me to Igor, 
who doesn't speak English that well from Kazakhstan, and I say, give me a, give me a buzz cut. And he goes, ready? And in, in two minutes, my whole life changed. <laughs> I mean, it was like, whoa. And he goes, yo, you look much younger. And I'm, yeah, right. Well, I'll tell you, now I'm starting to get used to this look. I must admit, whenever I wear a jacket, I always have my comb with me. Because I'm still used to, yo, how do I look? <laughs> now I don't have to do anything. It's really great. I would not recommend doing this, you know, go through cancer to get this look. But I'll tell you, it was uh, make lemonade or something like that. <coughs> so, oh, and the other thing Randy did, oh, this is good. She got me this do-rag as she was doing all this stuff. I mean, I do look cool with it, though, right? I look like Bruce Willis. Yo, what up, what up, pretty nice, yes. But I mean, in a suit, I wouldn't recommend come in. Wow. So, but I'm getting comfortable with what I have and accepting it. You know the secret to stay young? Don't look in the mirror. I mean it. I'm not, I don't have to look in the mirror anymore. I feel these pisses on my head. What do you say? My hair looks fine. So here are some lessons. What are some lessons? Be here now. If I go in the past, why did this happen? How come me? I already did something with cancer in 2002. It's a waste of time and energy. If I go too far in the forward, forward, in the future, I, I get nervous about health, my health and Randy, my wife Randy has Parkinson's, what's going to be with us? And then, then usually I pile on and it becomes money issues and the medical bills. And I get very nervous. When I keep it right this second, right now, in the present, I'm okay. It's hard to do, but I'm okay. The second thing that I've learned from this, move a muscle, change your thought. You got to do something if you can. Get up out of, out of your seat and go for a walk, five, you know, back and forth to the bathroom, something. Move a muscle, change your thought. You know, one thing, and it, it, it happened on, on the taxi cab over here, and it just happened just mm -hmm. now a little bit. I, I, every three months I get a hormone shot, a female hormone shot for prostate cancer. And it creates menopause. So I get hot flashes, like I'm understanding women of a certain age especially way, way more. It wouldn't be the way I would want to learn it, but I, I, I mean, so I have a much more appreciation of, wow, what just happened there? Me too. And so, be here now. Move a muscle, change a thought, and be grateful. I am eternally grateful that I'm here. I'm eternally grateful. By the way, my PSA now is 6.2. All right. Whoa, whoa, 6.2. You never know how strong you are until strong is your only choice. Thank you, thank you, thank you.